right, so this is just a special video cast on variables because variables are confusing. So I'm going to give you the definition of the three types of variables that we talk about, and then we're going to go through three examples. So here we go. An independent variable is the variable that you are manipulating in the research project or the research experiment. It's the variable that you are changing that you personally are doing something with. You're, the dependent variable is the variable that is being measured. So if these don't make sense, we'll go through the examples and hopefully at the end they'll be making a little bit more sense. So this is the variable that's being measured. This is the thing that's changing based on the independent variable. Again, we'll go through examples. A confounding variable is a variable that's getting in the way that might be affecting this something that might be affecting this. So um, if I want to know if I'm doing a research study on how monster energy drinks affect your level of energy throughout the day, the what am I going to be measuring? The amount of energy you have throughout the day. So that's going to be my dependent variable. That'll be my dependent variable here. My independent variable is going to be my, or to say types of energy drinks, be my energy drink. So again, the research project, or the, what I wanted, the question I had was, what type of energy drink will provide the most energy throughout the day? Um, my independent variable, I think I'll be changing, is my energy drinks. I'll try Monsters, I'll try Rockstar, I'll try uh, Red Bull, whatever you got. Go try it out. Now, the dependent variable is how much energy, so we're going to have to measure that in some way, but that's going to be our dependent variable. How much energy do those things provide you at the end of the day? A confounding variable is something that might get in the way. So let's say we measure this, and we do the energy drinks, and measure the amount of energy. Um, some things that might get in the way, that might be confounding variables, might be uh, the time of day. If you don't take them at the same time of day, Say you take the Red Bull at noon and you take the Monster at 6 a.m., they might provide different amounts of energies when you're reporting that. Um, the amount that you drink. Red Bulls come in smaller cans than Monsters. So the amount may be a confounding variable if you don't control for that, if you don't plan ahead for that. It might be a confounding variable. Um, the Your just general energy level for that day could be a a confounding variable, so that might be in the way. You might have just had a better day that during the day you had the rock star than the day you had the Red Bull, so that might be the confounding variable. So confounding variables are just things that may have affected your dependent variable. They're variables. Variables are just things, things that may affect your uh, project. Okay, so let's go through some more examples. And this should be making some more sense here. So we're going to have three. We're going to try to figure out what the independent, dependent, and confounding variables might be. So Dr. Kenneth Noisewater wants to know if listening to 90s hip-hop while studying leads to a higher test score on your next psych exam. So the first thing you want to look for is the dependent variable. It's usually the easiest thing to find. And so what, are we, what is being measured here? What's being measured? Our test score on our next psych exam. Okay, that's what's being measured. We're going to measure our test score. So the dependent variable would be test score. What are we going to do to try to change that test score? What's going to be manipulated? What's going to be changed to change that, to see if we can affect that test score? 90s hip hop music. So our independent variable is going to be type of music. Right? So you know, this isn't a great question right as it is. It's maybe hip-hop versus no music or hip-hop versus country music or hip-hop versus whatever. But, um, so we'll have to flesh that out a little bit. But the type of music is going to be independent variable. Depending on what type of music, how does that affect your test score? Confounding variables might be um, whether or not you like hip-hop just naturally. If you like it naturally, you may score better, okay? So... That could be a confounding variable. If you hate hip-hop music, it might affect you negatively. So maybe this is a horrible study because uh, hip-hop is going to affect you negatively no matter what, especially 90s hip-hop. Um, another confounding variable might be the difficulty of the test. 
maybe it's a more difficult concept for you than normal and you're just not able to understand and so the hip hop could have helped you in most tests but this particular one it doesn't so again confounding variables there's not one it's, this is stuff that you're not, not going to see in the problem here it's just stuff that um, you can think of that might have affected it and there's usually always confounding variables when we talk about uh, results so just be aware of those um, they're usually there. We usually have to look for them. They're usually not always uh, very apparent, but if we dig hard enough, we can usually find them. Um, let's see. Let's go to the next one. Professor Biff Wellington is studying who responds to a cry for help faster, seniors or freshmen. So what are we measuring here? First thing we look for is the dependent variable. Dependent variable is what is being measured, what are we measuring? We're measuring who responds faster. Oh, it should say faster. Who responds to a cry? Yeah, faster. So who responds faster? So the quickness of response. That's gonna be your dependent variable. So how fast are you responding to that cry? We're measuring how f your quick, your level of response. Your independent variable, what are we measuring? What's going to change this level of response? Well, whether you're a freshman or a senior. So your grade level is your independent variable. It's the thing that's changing. We're going to measure freshmen. We're going to take freshmen and then we're going to measure their quickness of response. We're going to take seniors and we're going to measure their quickness of response. We're going to see which one is faster. All right, confounding variables might be maturity level, um, might be the time of day that it was cried, might be the uh, whether it was more boys or girls responding to it. Um, so maybe more boys were asked as seniors and more girls were asked as freshmen. And maybe it, was this, it wasn't the freshmen that responded better, it was the fact that there was more girls there. Uh, so your confounding variable can be a lot of different things. All right, last example here. Um, a researcher is studying how sleep affects happiness. <clears throat> this one's a little bit more vague, which makes it a little bit more difficult to pull them out, but I think we can do it. We're going to look for the dependent variable. What are we measuring here? A researcher is studying how sleep affects happiness. When we see the word affects, what usually comes right after that word is something that's being measured. How blank affects blank. That's right after affects is the usually the dependent variable. And so this case is, would be the dependent variable, would be your level of happiness. All right. And your independent variable would be, so what's going to cause your level of happiness? Sleep. So you're probably sort of asking about your amount of sleep. Right. This is a pretty vague question. So it might be your quality of sleep. Uh, it might be the number of hours of sleep. But uh, something to do with sleep is going to be your independent variable. And then confounding variables might be what we just talked about. Um, maybe you got 10 hours of sleep, but those 10 hours of sleep were during the day when you usually sleep at night. So maybe the time you got your sleep was different. Um, <clears throat> if we're just measuring sleep, maybe it wasn't quality sleep. So maybe you were sleeping and you woke up every hour because you have a cold. So your confounding variable is just stuff that gets in the way. All right, so uh, those are the three types of variables that you're going to encounter. They're all very important. They show up on the FRQs all the time. And uh, go back and practice, and good luck.